Welcome to the Agents of Rock podcast with your hosts, Bill Algie, Dennis Talbot, and Alan Tate. We are three guys who have one thing in common, a love of rock and roll. Our goal is to talk about all things rock. We hope you find this show intriguing, funny, and occasionally highly opinionated. Enjoy. All right, welcome back to the Age of Rock podcast. Bill, Alan, and Dennis here. And one of our favorite guests of all time, always, the one and only Jeremy Asbrock. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Good. We're doing, doing all right. right. Bill, Bill thought everybody was muted there for a second. I did. I was like, <laughs> we're, trying nobody pol- spoke. <laughs> we're trying to be polite for once. Me. me. Well, that's so unlike you. Do you know, I remember last time I was on, uh, I was drinking wine out of a jar. Well, not this time. <laughs> You're drinking wine out of a can now? <laughs> nope. Just no, uh, not regular... wine? Just no, water? it's not wine. Yep. So I will not have purple teeth by the end of this. Blurring <laughs> <laughs> my words. No. I think the last time you were on, too, I think we, I think I tricked you if I'm not mistaken i think i asked you to be on the show and to cover a record and forgot to tell you what the record was and ended up being queens uh, oh yeah what was it um oh my gosh i can't think of the name of oh the game it was the game and so you were like oh, yeah i'll just play that- along and so we, we did a review and i, ve- I, I forgot I to tell you what the record that. was I forgot to send you the date you- yeah thanks god didn't i do the show one <laughs> time and, and i didn't I do the show one time and I did it outside and my neighbor was your neighbor idiot. was yeah your neighbor was yeah. like yeah. mowing or doing something and you get <laughs> yeah I remember that we like I, for our I shows moved. to I've be got different neighbors now oh we like our our shows to be unique <laughs> there's always some weird shit that happens <laughs> real quick yeah. but speaking of speaking of your your new neighbors but I saw the other day you got a lawnmower <laughs> okay well I didn't get <laughs> Tell a lawnmower story. so. So that was the lawnmower at the other house that's, you know, where I used to live. And uh, I have somebody renting that house from me now. And, you know, part of my selling point was, hey, you've got this riding lawnmower under the porch, you know, because, you know, normally in a renter situation, the tenant is responsible for their lawn. And it didn't work. So I had to have it repaired. The repair shop is only about, I don't know, three quarters of a mile, maybe a mile away. And uh, I couldn't find a truck or trailer. And my current, my landlord helped me get it over there, but he was busy and couldn't help me get it back. And just like, you know what, man, it's, I can cut through a couple parking lots and there's only (laughs) one, like a side street. And then when I get across that other main road, it's all sidewalks. I'm like, I can drive this thing home. (laughs) <laughs> you pulled a george jones except for you were except, sober <laughs> except i was stone cold sober honestly I, I you know i i knew my wife was gonna video the thing and you know everybody would get a kick out of it yeah fuck it you right. know that's what's classic the, the, man that's the, awesome what's the worst could happen i get a ticket or something right and that's then fun. you know I, funny. I i i just explained my situation and you know hopefully i'd have a sympathetic cop it was comedy gold, Jeremy. I do know, <laughs> yeah, I do know a guy that the one time got pulled over was drink was riding his lawnmower, um, uh, out on the street and had a beer. <laughs> and the cop was like, "I um, figured as long as I didn't have a beer and and, and you know there was a, a a train bridge that I had to go under under one of like the a seriously main road, but it had a bike lane, so I was able to stay in the bike lane and." Hit a parking lot, and then it was just parking lot, side street, cross another main road, then sidewalk. So I was only illegal for maybe a minute and a half total. And you know That's what? You good. could have said, to the, if the policeman pulled you over and said, look, there's some grass around my neighborhood that needs to be mowed, <laughs> and the county's not doing it, so I'm going to do it for you. So just turn on the mower and mow a little bit, and then you're done. See? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I, I, I'm local, too. They could see my... uh my zip code and be like, uh, you know, right. We'll, we'll have mercy on this guy. <laughs> what are you out doing he, today? I'm stealing lawnmowers. And also luckily I have a clean record. So you'll be like, Oh, he's got a clean yeah. record. He's, he's all right. We're, 
it'd be, it'd be like the helicopter from Nashville going, we're on a super low speed chase at this time. <laughs> <laughs> that was one hurt. thing I noticed, man. I, I had it in sixth gear, and normally that thing would haul ass in sixth gear. And, you know, the lawnmower's about 11 years old now, 10 years old. It, it doesn't move as fast as it used to. So <laughs> even though I was in sixth gear, it was moving where it used to move in like second or third gear. It's kind of slow. Yeah. I resemble. <laughs> it was fast Whatever like you it. said, Bill, you froze yeah. up and we didn't hear a single thing. Okay. Uh, Bill's freezing tonight. All right. Or Mr. Freeze. I don't know why. Hmm. Who knows? I don't know. All right. I don't anyway. have lawnmowers. Bill. Well, enough of the lawnmowers. So <laughs> I I sent you a list of things that we could chat about tonight because uh we haven't had John for a while. So Let's start with Rock and Pod. What do you think about Rock and Pod this year? New venue, different different uh, location. Man, I had a great time because uh, it seemed like I had more friends there this time. And you know, when I wasn't interviewing with people, I was you know just hanging out with my friends. Uh, I had a table this year that honestly I didn't get that much action because there were so many other people there that were cooler and more famous than me, and you know they were selling their wares. People only have so much money, mm-hmm. but yep. it, it was it was a great time. I mean, I I could see how much bigger it's gotten, and you know, pre party was a lot of fun, and mainly just seeing seeing everybody. But uh, talk about the pre party a little bit. How did you guys? figure out what songs you were doing and stuff like that. I, I always wonder how that, that's pretty, that's pretty much works. all Tyson. I mean, it, it, it's all Tyson's. He puts that together. He's, you know, a one man show as far as, you know, the organizing and stuff. And normally a rare hair is, I'm not exaggerating. It's about 150 musicians, but you know, he kind of wanted to scale the guitar players and drummers back since he had so many guest singers and, you know, so I was one of the guitar players. So I wound up playing about 10 songs where I would normally play one, maybe two. So that, that was cool, you know, because uh, in a normal rare hair, you just kind of wind up waiting around most, most of the night to play your one song. And this time, you know, I got to play with a bunch of people and, you know, I just, he told me what songs I was playing and, I said, okay. Of the people that you played with, was was there someone that was a highlight for you? Oh, let's see. Who did I play with? Yeah, playing with Tuck was fun because he's a buddy. Uh, I love playing tour tour songs with Anthony Quarter because he still sounds like he did back in the day. And mm. he's absolutely one of the nicest guys in rock. That uh, is not an exaggeration. Nope. God, who else did I play with? I played with Stevie Rochelle. I've known that guy since I was 16. So that was kind of neat. I met him when I was just, you know, a little kid and a a fan. And the fact that, you know, we still kind of know each other from meeting back then. And, you know, I've I've come a long way since then. (laughs) Uh, And God, who else did I play with? Y'all remember? It all kind of blurs together, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, man. I, I actually didn't I mean, get to show up till the next morning, so I had to work late that night, so I didn't get to. I mean, shit, uh, that was like that was like two two months ago. I can't even remember yeah. what I had for lunch lunch yesterday. <laughs> I think we all feel that pain. You, you didn't play with Eric Eric Martin, did you? Did you play with I Eric Martin at all? Okay, no. I can't remember. Yeah, it was a good show. I liked the format. It would seem to flow a little a little better. Like it wasn't, uh, it wasn't as long between getting songs out. Yeah, uh, man. So I was, think that was because was, of the limited. It was number fun of to play East Side Bowl with a packed room. I did a residency there in January, uh, and you know, there was only about twenty or twenty five people on any of those nights. So I know what it looks like when it's real empty, and seeing it full like that was pretty cool. Yeah, so do you, do you that. like that? Yeah, do you like that venue compared to the Mercury Ballroom? 
You mean Mercy Lounge? Oh, Mercy uh, Lounge. Sorry, I got the wrong. I got the wrong. No, uh, You're in the wrong, wrong city. city. Wrong city. State. Wrong state. <laughs> I'm in the wrong city. I was in Louisville. I didn't make it all the way to uh, Nashville yet. You know, there, there are definitely some things that I like more about it. And strangely enough, it's the same guy that built both of those clubs. Uh, Chart Consolving, mm-hmm. our friend. Uh, I, I like it because it's a little more spacious on stage, and you don't have those poles on each side. Uh, you don't have the steps coming up into the middle of the room, but you know, like, geez, man, I played Mercy Lounge so many times over the years that, you know, it's, it, it was another one of my homes. No, is Mercy I done? Don't... Yeah. Is Mer- so Mercy, did they tear it down or they just rebuild? No, re- they re- haven't configured. They it. haven't torn it down. I think that they are going to reopen it as a venue, but I don't know what they're doing to it. And it will not be any of the same people. It won't be the same name. And uh, same with the exit in. I know some people came in and bought it, and I think they right. are going to keep that name, but I, I don't know what they're doing to the inside of it. Got you. Because I know exit in was, but I don't know, weren't any of those on the national register or not the reg, national registry, but the I, historic I, registry? I, I think exit in is now, and that's okay. why it will remain as the exit in and still be a Got venue you. and not be turned into condos or something fucking stupid like that. <laughs> we don't need, we don't need any more. You don't need any more condos. And <laughs> yeah. so, you, you you think. One more. yeah, you know, it's crazy when we, and I came down for a uh, rock and pod, um, staying out at, we stayed at that, uh, where was that? The holiday Inn or whatever it was that they, we all stayed at yeah. over by Vanderbilt yeah. and driving into the city. I had it's been almost a year since I've been, really kind of been down there driving around and it has freaking changed so much. It's ridiculous. I mean, the, the, the glass towers are just, it's a glass city. And I mean, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but man, you know, we have a tornado that rips down Broadway into East Nashville every couple of years. It's like, yeah. man, <laughs> what so is going to happen with all these glass buildings when a tornado rips through again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's it, Nashville has changed so much. It's just, it's just ridiculous. But anyway, see, man, I, I live in East Nashville and it's on the other side of the Cumberland river. And man, wow. I don't cross the river if I don't have to. So it's like, I might as well be in another time zone. Cause but all that over there just is not part of my world. Right. I don't, I don't blame you. So when you, so when you say East, I, I can, I, I can never get my bearings straight when I'm, when I'm down there. So it's the other side of Nashville. So on the, on the side where, where well, Opryland is, Opryland, that's East. <laughs> yeah. Opryland, East. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah it, it's, it, it's not considered East Nashville, but yes, like, you know, if I, the way the Cumberland River works, like it does mm-hmm. like this horseshoe type thing. Sure. So like I went over by the stadium that's on, you know, our side of the river and then you've got downtown right on the other side, but then, you know, it goes down a little bit and I'm pretty close to that part of the river. Like I'm technically, if there were a bridge that crossed the river over here, I could walk to Opryland and all that, but right. unfortunately you got to go around and stuff, but it's still about 10 minutes away from me. Sure. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, I never, I, I always get my bearings messed up whenever, and I came, the last time I came down, I went from Evansville, so I was really jacked up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least when you went to Rock and Pod, way, so. at least when you went to Rock and Pod, you didn't end up in a cul-de-sac because the Google Maps took you the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people ended up that way. Oh there my gosh, I, I want to know how many people ended up on that same cul-de-sac I ended up on. Trying to get to the hotel was even a mess. The, uh, Google was, had me, I ended up, was in the construction zone of uh the the college or the stadium yeah you're on the back side <laughs> anyway jeremy let's talk about yes. you've been doing some you've been doing some dates with ace here recently yeah man yeah it was it was a good weekend in fact uh the last show we played uh in jamestown new york was i think it was sold out because awesome. yeah man that was that was a great crowd it was packed and they were really excited about it cool so this last run you've done, uh, when it was was that his birthday night too, or was that not? Uh, yeah, the the first show we played, which was in uh, Lorraine, Ohio, that was his actual birthday. That was his birthday. Okay, so this run here, are, is he continuing? He's is he getting more, um, smaller little? Are they going to do like smaller runs? Yeah, you know that's what we've been doing for quite a while now. Uh, 
honestly, that's kind of what we've been doing since we've been playing with them. That Alice Cooper tour was the only time, sure. you know, we did a really long run. Although, uh, back in February, we did a run in California and that was two weeks. Let's see. What was that? One, two, three, four, five, like Seven nine shows. or 10, nine or 10 shows mm-hmm. on the run, which is, you know, pretty busy for us. But it was all Southern we had California, two... wasn't it? Most of it was. No, we, no, we did Northern California. We did Berkeley and Monterey and Petaluma. Because I was in Napa about that time. But I, it was like, I think at that point, that's when you went south. You were down around, yeah. I think you were in L.A. kind of area at that point when I was out there. Yeah. But, um, wow. Cool. So you were out there also. Were you out there when it was cold and February. rainy? We and actually, we flew, out, we flew out. We were in Napa. And actually, on uh, we flew out on I think it was Thursday or Friday. No, it was yeah Friday. I think it was. And that night it snowed. And they said the 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 winery that we were at originally at two, three days ago you couldn't get to it because the snow was so bad. <laughs> I wonder what that's going to do to like their wine season. I mean, is that going to mess mess up they, their well, grapes? No, because everything right now is is actually we're get all the grapes are getting trimmed. All the bushes are getting trimmed, so it really doesn't affect them at all. All the honest. bushes. What's that? He said all the bushes. All, of them? all the bushes. No. no. <laughs> well, the, the vines. I, are, I call them vines or whatever you could. Oh, want to call okay. Them. Well, no. they are vines. There are vines, but anyway, no, they it were they were all trimmed see, at that point. It was a trip to see snow in the mountains in Pasadena and like flood rains when we played L.A. and you know that's usually. 70 to 80 degrees there year round so they don't really run heat so every venue was cold because they don't run heaters there and then all the mountains normally when i go you know they're ready to catch on fire and they were all green and lush (laughs) it was strange and i'm usually i always want to stay too i usually don't like leaving and i couldn't wait to get home because it was nicer in nashville than it was there (laughs) so your run with uh, alice cooper we actually Alan and I saw you at the Ascend in Nashville. Bill, you didn't make right. it for that one, did you? You didn't come down. No, for I saw one. him in Indy. Yeah, you saw him in Indy, but we saw you at Ascend with Alice. Was that, I mean, even though it was, you were still under what, COVID um, issues yeah. at that point. So yeah. did you get to, did you get to hang out with the, what was it like your band could only hang with your own band or could, was oh, it the no, whole could, group? No, the tour, the, everybody on tour could hang with each other, but gotcha. you know, we couldn't have any guests and, right. you know, leaving, leaving the bubble was not encouraged. Uh, now that it's over, you know, we snuck out a couple times, right? But, <laughs> but not and especially a lot. being, especially being in Nashville when you have family and friends and everybody there wants to come and see you. I know, I know at that point, I mean, I remember, I think you and even Ryan was putting out on their Facebooks, like going, as much as we want to see you guys, we just can't do it, you know? And it was, yeah. cause we showed up early actually. And we, and it was raining like hell that day during the day. Yeah. And then it was we all parked. hiding under trees and stuff. Yeah. But then it, it got really nice that night though. Oh, it yeah, did. It was, that that nice. That was beautiful that night actually. And that's a great little venue. I like Ascend. It was, it was a it's good night. Cool. Sound quality. There's really good. Sounds yeah. there really good. It was very good, and you guys played great, and um, Alice was always, you know, Alice is always good, too. But, yeah, that was a great show. That's the last time I got to see you guys. But uh... Well, that was uh, really, really exciting for us. I mean, that's the biggest venue I've played in Nashville, and, you know, my wife and my brother and my son were there, and, you know. How cool. My, my oldest son, Rory, has been to a lot of my shows. I mean, he, he basically grew up at the Rock and Roll Residency, but. You know, that was like the first time he was a little older and I was playing a big venue and that, that was pretty cool. That's a, that's a good dad son moment right there. No, no, that's pretty yeah. cool. That is good. So I think he realized that dad's job is a little different than most dad's jobs. <laughs> <laughs> and when you, Hey, when they say bring your dad to work, you know, school day, then you go, you got, you got all kinds of good stories. Well, you know, I pick him up from school pretty much every day, so I'm already like, I mean, I look like this on the playground after school every day. I'm, I'm definitely a noticeable dad. You're the cool dad. Nothing, yeah, nothing <laughs> wrong with that. You're, you're probably well, all the I, other dads I, are probably. I, I am to the other parents, but you know, to him, 
I'm definitely not the cool dad. <laughs> in fact, I, I, in fact, I'm bad cop at home. <laughs> we somebody has to be the bad cop. So somebody's you know, got yeah. Somebody's got to be the role. Somebody's, somebody's got to play be. the role. Yeah, I'm also a assistant coach of his baseball team this year, and you know I coach third base, and I'm out there with my black leather jacket on, and you know I wear my hoop earrings <laughs> all the time, and I'm definitely a different looking dad on the baseball field too. Rock and roll referee, that's what you. There are. you go. <laughs> what, what's that's your team? Awesome. What's your team name? Do you have a rock and roll team name? No, they're the Pirates, no. and uh-huh. you know all all the teams are you know like. They have the same colors as the pro teams and stuff and pro team names. Ah, nice. I never like the yellow and black of the pirates. It just, yeah. You know. <laughs> so when they, t- when I asked them like, what, what's the team pirates? I'm like, Oh man, the pirates. <laughs> well, what would you have preferred? Oh, like the angels or the braves, like both of those, you know, r- red, white, and blue. There you go. Mean nothing wrong with Cubs. that either. Yeah. Get them all, red, white, and blue. <laughs> For the Cubbies, your yeah, Cubby those guy. were the two teams that uh that I played on when I was young too, and you know we were number one every year. Right on, nice. Did I you was play in high school kid. too. No, I had long hair in high school, so you know I couldn't I couldn't be on the, the team. I I, I quit cool playing kid. when I was about eleven because my mom gave me an option. Like I was great. I made all stars every year, and then. One year, she was like, so you want to play baseball this year? And you mean I have a choice? She's like, yeah, you have a choice. I'm like, fuck, no, I don't want to play baseball. <laughs> I want to play guitar practice, and get chicks. Because <laughs> practice was when Dial MTV came on. And that's when all the good videos came on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, you know, some parents might have thought that was a waste of time. But it turns out it was just research because it worked out well for me. Right. Yeah, you never. Know. Jeremy, let me ask you a question. You never know what you're going to grow up to be, what the influence is going to come from. Yeah. Well, that was weird, Bill. You said you talked, and then like, like I three seconds later, I heard <laughs> you're like this. Anyway, Jeremy, a question, real quick. So when yes. you guys with Ace, uh, you guys have been out. You were a, a five piece band for a long time, and with the with the three guitars. And now that it's changed, does it does it change your playing or what you have to play having one less guitar in the band? Uh, it doesn't really change my playing. Uh, it's kind of like readjusted our singing and our harmonies a little bit. Okay. Because, uh, you know, you've got a, a drummer suddenly that has to take on one of them. And, you know, singing and playing drums is a little more difficult than singing and playing guitar or maybe sure. it's not i don't know but you know i, I try to be sympathetic <laughs> to the drummer since you know we don't rehearse obviously uh well i shouldn't say obviously but we don't rehearse <laughs> so, so, <laughs> well a- as a drummer so it's, it's just easier for me to jump around because like i am good at harmonies and I can pick whichever one and I don't have to practice it over and over. Like if I know what I'm singing, I'm good. I can, I can do that one. So since that's easy for me and you know, whoever's playing drums is having to switch or even Ryan for that matter, because playing bass and singing is completely different than playing guitar and singing. So Mm -hmm. like, Whatever they're more comfortable with, I'll take the one that might be harder for either of them, you know. So that's like the only difference for me. The but as far as the guitar playing, my my parts haven't changed at all. Because I was curious about that because I know that you said earlier with having the extra guitar, having the three guitars in there, you can actually put those parts in that that were recorded yeah. that make it sound better. And then all of a sudden, of course, then Ryan goes from playing guitar doing those parts to playing bass. And then it's, well, it's, it's it like, just sounds a little more like you know Ace had been doing it prior to that, or like Kiss does it, you know, like in right. Detroit Rock City. Yeah, we're gonna lose that rhythm guitar over right. the solo, or you know, whatever. Right. But no, I'm, I'm I'm sure it sounds good, but it, it was just interesting the fact that that he didn't keep it to that point whenever it, it got changed there at some point. And no, well, just... you, uh, so you know, Phil started playing with Accept full time and it just got to the point with him where 
you know, he wasn't able to do both anymore. And then Zach and, you know, Ace had never had two other guitar players. You know, he took me and Ryan Phil on as a package deal. Sure. And then, you know, Zach came in and then Zach was busy in February uh, recording with Corey Taylor. So he was going to be out for that whole California run. And then, you know, Ace kind of asked me if I would talk Ryan and play in bass. He's just like, look, you know, I, I took you guys on as a package deal. Now that package isn't really there. And, you know, I've never really had two other guitar players and, you know, right. scaling back just kind of made sense to him since, you know, our little, you know, threesome thing wasn't there anymore. Sure. But I'm sure and, it's working out fine. I mean, like I said, I know you guys. Oh, still, yeah. And, you still you know, sound like, great. It's just that you don't have that little extra, like you said, like a little bit of sound here, that extra little bit. But he never had it before. So it doesn't right. matter. Uh, <laughs> to me, it, it sort of made sense having that other guitar because like Ace plays painfully loud. And <laughs> if you're on, if you're in front of stage right, you, you're going to hear bass now and you're going to have trouble here in my guitar or like, you know, the rhythm guitar parts because Ace plays lead. Sure. So, you know, it'll kind of wind up sounding like a three piece with Ace on guitar. Whereas before it was like stereo guitar and sure. whichever side of the stage you were sitting on, you would still hear the rhythm guitar, which I don't think a lot of people thought about because I'd say only about half of Ace's fans dug the three guitars, man. The, actually even kiss fans like they just didn't get the three guitar thing which first of all you're not paying extra for the extra guitar people and <laughs> second of all like i don't know to me like if you've got like bass sort of centered and guitars on each side then you get like you can you can hear the other guitar part cuz you know like Ryan and I weren't really playing different parts sure it just kind of filled it out a little more. Well, and the, and the thing was, knowing you guys from as long as we've known you guys through, you know, watching the residency and all that bullshit, you guys, you always, you guys, as a t you're a team, and it, every, and anything you guys do sounds great. So it was vocally, you know, vocally, it, it definitely like was stronger, right? Because of that, right. But like I said, it, it's going to be, it's good for Ace. It's good for Ace either way. But like I said, we, we just, as fans of you guys, of all three of you guys, I mean, we, we love you guys. So it's, it's well, good you. to see you guys all together and everything. Cause, and I don't know, Bill, you want to, I know you're the host. I keep. <laughs> no. It's okay. I mean, this is what we were going to talk about. We were, we were, I know. we were talking about stuff. So, so I did want to, I did want to ask, do you have any, it, have you, but can you hear me at all? Is this yeah. yes? So yeah. Oh, okay, good. Because <laughs> I didn't know. All of a sudden, it's like maybe I'm just gone. But I didn't want to ask. Do you do you um do you want to weigh in on the on the debacle between Ace and 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 Paul and all that mess that was going on? Do you have any thoughts about that? Or I, for me, it's hard for me to to see a uh, band that I really have enjoyed for. I'm not gonna years like... so get into like siding with anybody it's it's just real unfortunate i mean i don't think anybody wants to see or hear any of them at this stage you know taking shots at, the, at each other you know we want we as fans at this stage would love harmony between the band you know it just i don't know like most sure, of our stinks. favorite most of our favorite bands are suffering from the lack of love and harmony. I mean, look, look what's going on with Motley Crue. I just, um, yeah, at, at this stage in the game and at everybody's <laughs> age, you know, everybody, you would think that everybody would just be grateful that, you know, everyone's still alive and everyone's still playing. And right, right. I don't know, man. Fan, fans don't like that stuff. And, but, I yeah. I also heard today that Aerosmith is doing their farewell tour without uh, the drummer. Yep. Well, I was just yeah. going to bring that up. That yeah. fact. And then you got Journey. 
you've got Neil Sean and you got, you know, John McCain. <laughs> John McCain suing each other. Oh, man. And then and then the singer's out there trying to do his best to do his shit. He's like, you know, I'm just fucking done. You know, basically, <laughs> fuck you guys. You know, I, I just I mean, that would be that would be the hell van to be in his journey. <laughs> I'm telling you. I, I, I don't know how yeah. the hell they fucking even function. I mean, it's just they're picking up a well, paycheck. Well, they, they have there. two they have two private planes and you know yeah. each team <laughs> flies on their own plane and you know they only see each other on stage i always yeah. looked at it like man if david lee roth and eddie van halen can pull it off anybody can pull it off exactly exactly and and you have to have enough money to travel separately because there's some bands out there that you know the world would love to see reunited but you know the, the money is just not there to hmm. travel separately and stay in separate hotels and stay separated. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, anyway, it's... to answer your question, it, I don't know, like I, I definitely am not going to jump in and side with anybody in that argument. It's just real unfortunate. I'm I'm glad that Ace didn't come back and, and, you know, he was supposed to come I back. I am and, too. I'm just glad he just, somebody got I'm in really his glad. ear and yes. said stop i'm just glad he didn't do something st- I stupid i'm so <laughs> happy so happy that he didn't do that <laughs> yeah i it, yes. it, it just it had been bad for all the fans it had been bad for it had been bad for him it had been it'd been it, bad for everybody it it, just, it, ra- it it rattles it rattled some cages for a few days though it did yeah <laughs> i mean it was like one of those things where and you know what i don't know even Gene will say, uh, you know, at some point, you know, even bad publicity is good publicity. It got it got everybody's name in the news, and everybody was talking about it, you know, for a while. So the thing is, though, is like, yeah, I guess that's true, but like, neither camp needed that. Like, no, you know, kisses really. kisses shows are you know pretty sold out for the most part, as, mm-hmm. you know, on this final little thing here, and you know, Ace's attendance has been really good this year like good you know we we were doing great before but i i would say that covid really really did a lot for his attendance like just people being away and then when we came back like every show we've done since covid has been very well attended that's awesome well and the fact of too he's not like asking five thousand dollars a ticket and you know what I'm saying? He's he's got a great show going around, playing some great music with great musicians at a you know at a at a decent price, at, a, at an honest price. You know, and, and to be honest, I like to see these shows in a smaller you know not a not a, say a smaller venue, but you want know to say a more yeah. intimate venue. I'm just yeah, I'm, we play. I'm so, we usually do like pretty cool theaters and stuff. You know, like I love that. those shows. Yeah, and I think they're yeah, fantastic. They're, they're fun. Yeah. Don't need those big. Although I, I like playing arenas too. Why? <laughs> I, <don't, no>, I, <laughs> I would too, but I don't. We did it once, but anyway. <laughs> I like story. watching from in an arena. Actually, I like watching them both. I think you get yeah. it's just a it's a different, different experience. Vibe in both. It's a different yeah. It's a different vibe in each <laughs> one. So I enjoy both of them. So. But I won't be going to see Earl Smith. I have really no desire to do that uh, unless like somebody drops a free ticket in my pocket. That ain't probably not going to happen. I saw the, I saw the Kiss Earl Smith tour and watched and participated in everybody leaving after Kiss played because it was. I watched. I think I stayed for the first maybe four songs for Earl Smith and just left because I was like, this is horrible. I mean, it was really bad. <laughs> Where's the Motley Crue? I'm not gonna lie. I did the same thing. Uh, they weren't horrible, <laughs> but. After, after the kiss assault of your senses, I was I don't know I was a little bored. Yeah, well that's what I, I yeah. yeah I, I don't I know they didn't really sound lot. horrible. It was just that was not a show worth. But following then you that. know, like I I have people that that disagree <laughs> with me on that. Like I'm, I think it's Phil and Ryan both thought that you know Aerosmith blew them off the stage. Wow, but I don't know what they saw in Nashville either. Yeah. Ryan Not didn't in... see Nashville. Ryan right. saw it somewhere else. I got a great analogy. It's like it's like cuddling after sex. You just can't. It, you just don't want to do it that long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
bombastic, blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, now we're going to have some Aerosmith. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> well, the show that I saw, with, yeah. The show that I, that, that I saw, they played more, they played quite a few songs from that new record that was Honking on Bobo or whatever that was that kind of blues right. thing. And I was like, this is not yeah. what I came to. I, I mean, literally, we were in the lawn and I just walked. These, this mass exodus of people after Kiss was over, they just left. I'm like, oh, they're just going to get something. No, they didn't come back. I mean, I thought they were just you know, going to said, break. No. Having said that, Ryan and Phil and I caught one of the Vegas residency shows about, well, let's see, what, that was the end of 2000, so about three and a half years ago. And they were fucking awesome. And John Douglas was playing drums. You know, uh, Joey Kramer wasn't on drums for that one either. But man, they were really good. Well, you know, Jerry. <laughs> Aeros- Aerosmith, Journey, Kiss, they all, they're all they all legacy acts now. There are very few legacy acts that can play their new music, and the fans yeah. want to hear it. You know, Bruce Springsteen <laughs> could, you know, record himself scratching dog poop off his shoes, and his fans is listening to that, you know, playing at the show. You know, <laughs> they're just those legacy That's acts true. that can't get away with playing their new music. I don't want to hear new music. When I go see Sticks, I don't want to hear your new song. I want to hear Sticks. I want to hear. I want to hear that, Lady that's, again. That's exactly that what I'm getting at. Thousand know? fucking time. I don't care. We've seen. I mean, well, Kiss. the one thing I will say for Ace, uh, <laughs> when we were supporting Spaceman, we did four different songs off of that record. I mean, yeah, we were yeah. averaging about two a night. And honestly, when his next record comes out, we'll probably play some off that. He, he's a, and you know, Origins. You know, everybody. Right. Well, you know, lots of people bitched about the covers, but, you know, we were supporting that record and, right. you know, we were playing like two songs off of it. Basically, we stuck them together to, you know, for a medley, but we were still doing Never In My Life and Good Times, Bad Times, you know. So sure. when, when he's when he's touring, he's supporting a record like right now we're sort of in between records. So we're not really doing anything that focused so are you are you Jeremy, you doing any work on his new album at all or no. Okay. I I, cause I know he's been doing some uh, recording and, and putting it on Facebook. Yeah, man. Uh Steve Brown from Trickster is pretty much co written everything with him and he's producing and you know, and it, it just kind of makes sense to us. I'm not upset about it. Just, you know, I live in Nashville and Ace sure. lives in Jersey and Steve lives right up the road. So, you know, they kind of you know i, I know they had met before but when we did creatures fest last year i know that you know they right. kind of got a little tighter and talked and you know steve knew lara from back in the day because they're about the same age and you know it just kind of came together like that and sure you know ace ain't, ace ain't gonna fly us up there to <laughs> fuck it and, pu- and put us up to to do it i mean you know right. he, he he's gonna play all the guitars anyway so sure sure I just curious how he was going to put that together. I know he talks about, you know, he was talking about doing the new album. I was like, going, well, is he going to use any of you guys to, to, to record any of it? But I figured, no, he's, like you said, he's the same do way he's, he's do always it. done it. Right. That's Cause cool. you know, like he's never really used his band to do a record. He's always kind of played most of the guitars and most of the bass. And, and he had, and he may have a guy drums for everything right. for years. <laughs> so <laughs> exactly. So it's all good. Good deal. So speaking of new records, you want to talk a little bit about the uh, Rock City Machine Company? Well, hell yeah. yeah, let's do that. I love that song. When's the vinyl coming? Yeah, when, I got, we, we got Bill teased. and I. <laughs> well, it's, it's, we need it's, vinyl. It's we need vinyl. Sooner than we thought because, like, you know, every vinyl plant is backed up for like six months, but we got our test pressings, which is real early about two weeks ago and we listened to those down so uh instead of six months from then it's going to be more like two so it's possible we'll have them in june uh we're going to be doing cds also so originally the plan was to do cds first and then do another release with the vinyl later but i think we might be able to do it all in one one big bang nice I guess save you me can and, be save thankful. Me and, go ahead, go ahead. I guess you can be thankful that Taylor Swift's album finally came out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Oh, she's got another yeah, one that she's was... going to pump out. No. <laughs> no. That was a record store day thing. I didn't know. That was a big deal. I mean, yeah. I went to, right. yeah, when I went to the record store here local, well, not locally, in Indianapolis, I'm like, what was the big deal today? Because, I mean, there were, everybody kept talking about all these people camping out and stuff like that. And, and the guy at the record shop said, this is a damn Taylor Swift record. He said, oh, it was gosh. crazy. There were all these kids out in line waiting for the damn record. <laughs> and he's like, and I'm like, good grief. She's going to be gone in five years. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand. I, I don't think so. Well, Jeremy, I don't, Jeremy, I, say, I don't think say, she is, man. She's been around I mean, for a like, long time, no. dude. I know, man. She's been around for like 15 years or something yeah, she's now. Already, and, uh, she's, no, man. I, maybe I just hope she'll, be, she one of the, she'll be one of those old, the old country people. She'll be around forever. Dolly, the Dolly, Dolly, will, Dolly, Dolly will hand her 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 fucking you know her, you're gonna take the flame after I'm done. <laughs> well, Jeremy, I save mean, me and save, save me and Bill. What we need two albums. You want save two to yep. the side because we're gonna we're and gonna uh, it, it's gonna be colored vinyl. It's gonna be like a a red marble, I believe, is what we agreed to do the first. Cool, one. cool. I want how many songs are on it. There are eight songs. There are seven originals, and there's a cover of "Rambling Gambling Man." Cool. And man, oh, like R- R- Ryan said it best. He said it sounds like it sounds like new music that you've been familiar with your whole life. Like you know, it. Everybody probably expects it to sound like Kiss. I don't really know what that sounds like. I don't think it really sounds much like Kiss, but it sounds mm-hmm. like every band we've loved. It sounds like. You'll hear some ACDC, you'll hear some Aerosmith, you'll hear some Van Halen, you'll hear some Def Leppard. You know, there's a little bit of every band we loved in there. It just sounds, it, it's just a good, strong rock record. Every well, song I mean, sounds like it should be on the radio. Right. The, the first song that you put out, I, I thought it was like that. It, it's kind of a timeless song. It really, it has some 80s roots to it. It has some 70s roots to it. It has a yeah. little bit of everything mixed into it. But it it doesn't like, and you said it's very, it's very. The the first time you hear it, you're already singing the chorus before the song's over with. Yeah, and, and every the, song first... has that, and I'm very very proud of that fact. And that first song we put out was, you know, it kind of forced our hand because, like NASCAR was using that song for their spring southeast race, and so. Our producer, Marty Fredrickson, told us, like, well, man, you can't put that song out there available for people and and, and not put it out and, you know, let them be able to go somewhere and listen to it. So it sort of forced us to put that song out. And, you know, since we haven't announced a release date, we're just kind of like slowly putting things out there. Uh, I look at it as kind of like, a pre-release it, it's not it's not even really our first single it's just a song that we had to we were forced to put out because of the race because hmm. you know we didn't make a video for it and mm-hmm. when is the race already happened is that right that was a richmond race right uh it wasn't in richmond well it wasn't it richmond was, uh no you know what man i don't really know where it was i think the race was in <laughs> april too Oh, Bill, okay. you're the NASCAR fan. You should know. You know, shit. not for a long time. I haven't. I have not. You're when not. Started, you're not that guy anymore. When we started, when they started dicking around with the points, and you could get 37 points for finishing dead last, and all that. I, yeah, Jeremy. Jeremy, can I tell you something real quick? This is how big of a fan that <laughs> yeah. Bill was at one point. He had all the cars. Didn't you have all the cars? And then whoever won the race that week, didn't you put that car out no, front? I never or something? did that. I Hell thought no. you did that back oh, then. Oh God, no, <laughs> no, dude. You, like, I never the... had. I never had all the cars. You had some of the cars. <laughs> no, I never had. Did you I have had, some? No, of the cars? I had Jeff Gordon cars because that's who I liked. But I didn't have any. I didn't. What? I had Jeff Gordon cars. It's all. It's the only cars I had. So I, I'm making all anyway, this up in my head. Then you I, are I making that swore, up. I could have swore you had this thing where every week that you would put the. No. Oh, maybe that's somebody else then. Maybe. No. So <laughs> go, going back, going back to the. This. Oh no, man! He told everybody that. <laughs> it's go, funny either way. <laughs> can I speak now? Going back to the album that you guys are putting on, you recorded "Rambling Gambling Man." What made you pick that particular song? 
Well, actually, Ryan picked that song, and it was a good, good choice because a nobody has like a really famous or popular cover of that song. And I mean, I know you guys have heard Ryan's voice, and I mean that song is his wheelhouse. He sang the shit out of that song. It it was just perfect for his voice, and I don't know, it was a great cover, and uh, it's kind of true to the original, but. Not really, because we don't have an organ player, and that song was very organ heavy, and you know we kind of wrote new riffs for it, so it sounds like a really new, fresh cover of it. It's actually one that I'm most excited about because people know that song already, and it doesn't sound exactly like the original, but it kind of sounds like the original. Well, that's cool because I'm always a sucker for a good cover song. Yeah, man, it. That was a good, good choice on Ryan's part, but he knew he knew he'd sing that song good because I mean it's just perfect for his voice. Well, we all know Ryan has a killer voice, and he proved that at the Indianapolis Kiss Expo when he started to show out with a Sammy Hagar song. <laughs> oh yeah, who who goes into a song cold like that? <laughs> the rock and roll residency does that guy. <laughs> that, that 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 was our that was our opener a lot actually. I mean, that's a good opening track. Yep. Will that come back sometime, you think? What's that? Will the rock and roll... Uh, I don't know. Will that's, that's, come that's, that's, back that's, sometime? That's up to Phil. I understand. <laughs> All right, man. What else you got? You got anything else? Uh, I don't know. I, I know you did send over some stuff to talk about. I, I glanced at it once, but I thought uh, I'll just I'll just talk about it yeah. as they bring it up. That way, it'll be kind of fresh to me. Yep, I think we per- I think we pretty much got it. Uh, I, I, ge- I guess I guess I'm allowed to mention this because the poster came out, and you know we have not made a formal announcement about it. But uh, Rock City Machine Company is going to tour with Skid Row and Buck Cherry in December. So, you know, it, the the show posters are out there and our logo is on it. So I, I guess I'm allowed to say it, but, you know, we haven't we haven't actually made a formal announcement about it yet. But I, since it's out there, I guess I can confirm it's happening. We're doing the West Coast leg. We're starting in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, I think, and just doing like California, I believe, like Boise, Idaho. Uh, Denver, Colorado, actually some places that like we never really get to with Ace. So that's, that's going nice. to be exciting. Yeah, that's I've been cool to some pretty cool different. venues in Denver. Yeah. There's one really, really and, cool. That, right now. And, and, you know, that's the tour did so good on their first leg. Live Nation added, you know, a couple more legs because it was just sold out every night. And Ryan's been really, really tight with Skid Row for a long time and that, that's going to be a good time and honestly i i it's been decades since i went out and played original music on a tour you know i've been playing cover songs for over half my career now well that is that tour going to end up hitting nashville or in the midwest anywhere or is it strictly west west coast this is strictly west coast damn it i heard well, uh, it's a good excuse to road trip to Albuquerque. I <laughs> kind of feel like uh, that tour already hit the Midwest. Like that might have been like the cities they were hitting in March. Uh, I know the next leg they're doing will be Canada and like northern cities. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure. They might have because I remember. I don't think they came to Indy though. I think they probably came around, probably up to Fort Wayne or something like that. But I don't think they came to Indy. All right, I'd have, I'd have went to that for sure. So, I want to. So Jeremy, I do know that we're playing. Go ahead. No, no, no. You're fine. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say Ace is playing in Lincoln, Indiana, which I think is kind of close to you guys uh, mm-hmm. at the end of July. Yep. I won't I'm be able to be... make it because I've already got a gig. <laughs> I want to be in Paris. <laughs> That's not France, right. not Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, no shit. I was like, going, God damn, if all the times he's going to be in my fucking. I went to high school two miles from this venue. I mean, it's. it's what, what's it's the venue my... like? 
it's beautiful. It is it's, it's in Lincoln City. It's in this state park, and it's it's this nice little amphitheater. outdoor vi- amphitheater. It's really nice. Back in this wooded area, that you know, it's 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 beautiful. I've seen a couple concerts back there. It's small, but it's fun. You will enjoy it. I guess I'll have right. to go. I I have to represent the group then. And if you go by Heritage Hills High School, that's where I went to high school. So you can go. <laughs> I know a guy who went to high school there. <laughs> you can tell I used. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I was like, when I saw, I was like, oh my god, they're gonna be a Lincoln. Fuck, I'm gonna be out of the country at that point. <laughs> oh man. Well, anyway, so you're going to Paris? Yes, I'm going to Paris. Well, that'll be a little more fun. And You've it's, seen it. It's, <laughs> it's my first time out of the country, so yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be too sad, but I'm gonna be sad that I couldn't see him. In We're gonna Paris. find out that he got put in jail in Paris. Probably, Probably. <laughs> scaling the Eiffel Tower, doing yeah. something well, stupid. J- j- just have Bill stream the show. There you go. I mean, <laughs> honestly, go. like you know, we we don't exactly shake the setup a whole lot. So you know, if you watch some YouTube's of what we're doing now, it ain't going to be that much different. Got you. Hey, Ace is from an older school. Then. Ace is from an older school, man. Like you know where you did a set for about a year and then you kind of change it up the next year. And I mean, on one hand, he's got, you know, so many classic songs that he has to do that, you know, you can only yeah. shake it up so much, but a lot of people complain about that, but you know, like he's still kind of in a pre YouTube mindset or pre internet mindset. Like you did, sure. you got your set together and you did that set. You know, mm-hmm. I, I I see it both ways. I really do because with Gene, we did a different set every night. We did not do the same set one time, and you know, I I, I get it. I understand it, it. It's one of the really unfortunate things about the internet. Like, you know, everybody knows everything about your show before you even come there, right? And about, they've even decided. I still don't look up set list. I don't oh, look up I, set list very often. I for actually, shows. Very I was, you belong. You you belong to a very small per- percentile, yeah, I, my friend. Yeah, I just don't do it anymore. I I, I want to have that. I want to have that experience of what the next song is. I went to see Cheap Trick a couple weeks ago, which you know, and you never know what they're going to play because they're, they're exactly always playing they're one of those ball. bands, you know, like yeah, you know, and I didn't they, look at it at know, all. Yeah. But well, every even cheap if you did, is good though. Yeah, it wouldn't wouldn't yeah. matter. <laughs> even if you did look at their set list, like it, yeah, it wouldn't matter because you know they they tend to not do that. Yeah, they were on point. It was a great show. Small venue, great show. Two thousand seater, filled yeah. to the rim. Yep. Cool. Cheap Trick is the most reliable rock band out there. I mean, yeah. if, if there were like. A, a rock and roll yearbook with superlatives, they would be most reliable. <laughs> they should be actually considered America's band because they are they are the, mo- the most American rock and roll band yeah. that there is. I mean, and it, it is keep they keep producing. I mean, they they're just they're like you said they're just constantly fucking good. I mean, they're just they never. You stop. don't really hear like, man, I went to see Cheap Trick, man, and they fucking sucked last night. You never, never. hear that. <laughs> I've never heard that. <laughs> never. I've seen him like five times, and I, I'm like, Great. Dad, who's seventy five, saw him. Yeah, my dad, who's seventy five, saw him for the first time. Well, that's not true because he took me when I was um, unable to go by myself at that age, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> back way back in the day. But he saw him for the first time in years, uh, uh, a month and a half ago in Florida at a, at a theater um, in Jacksonville, and uh, he bought three ticket, four tickets, and then only ended up using one. Um, He's like, they played everything and they played all kind. I mean, stuff from every era. And I go, yeah, dad, you, and, and if you go tomorrow night, they're going to play something completely different. <laughs> That's how it works. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, what's the most amount of Rick Nielsen picks you have left a cheap trick show with? Well, I set back for this, this was all yes, seated. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> We're way. He back. was handing. Oh God. I do have, I have, I have two that I got. I have two that I got from the show I saw in uh, New Orleans at the uh, House of Blues. 
Um, we were on the floor for that show because it was open flooring. So I got two then, but uh, um, yeah, there, this guy in the front, there was a, it was funny. I, I know we're about out of time. So there's a guy that was, he was trying to get this pick to this guy in like the third row. And the guy just kept dropping it. I mean, you could see it. And Rick was like, kept throwing his hands in the air and whatever. So finally he grabs a handful of picks and just throws the whole <laughs> damn handful at it. <laughs> And the guy and the guy puts his hand up. And he's got like five in there. <laughs> he just the first him Rick him. Nielsen pick I ever got. I didn't go to the show. My brother went to the show. This was in like 1985 or something. And Rick Nielsen took a trash bag of picks and just <laughs> dumped the audience. And that was the first one. The most I ever left with was 32. Wow. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. So I've, I've never got a single one. Like We always sit. You know, we always went to the stadium and seen them. And then, like I said, we were yeah, so far back. Isn't He's his not thing. that. No, I can't get. I can't get one that far. I've become a very, very skilled pick thrower, and man, I can hit some pretty impressive targets. There you go. I, I'm not great at a lot of stuff, but I've become pretty great at throwing picks. Are you the over the like the thumb to the pink finger, kind of like the the beer? No, top, man. The beer I cap. got this move. It's it, it's mine's more like throwing a frisbee. There you so go. A sling, and, uh, or a sl- yeah, it, it's like this underhand. It, it, it's more like throwing a frisbee than anything. But there you go. I mean, I can hit short distance. I can hit long distance, and I I usually hit my target. You're a master I'm picker. For somebody, I, I'm not just like <laughs> randomly throwing picks out there. I, I pick right. out a face and I aim for that face. And that's cool. Seven gotta- to eight times out of ten, I will hit it. Until you get it, like the lawyer says, you just, you just, you just, you went right through her forehead. Right through her forehead. <laughs> I'm, I like, might have hurt people a couple times. But... Put an eye out once in a while. Or, you know, that's just part of going to a concert. You pay the ticket, you, you, you pay the price. Yeah, I got my, I got, I got two, Pretty I got much. two Jeremy picks. I got two, I have two Jeremy picks. So one I got off the table at Rock and Pod. <laughs> I got one of those. <laughs> and, yeah, and I think the other one I got at a rare, at a rare, uh, not a rare hair show, but a residency show. So, uh, did I throw it to you, or did you just wind up with it? No, I think it. Uh, I think you threw it out there, and nobody got it, and I snagged it off the floor. Okay, well, watch your eyes, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You, you see me about to toss. <laughs> you might want to c- cover Be your ready. eyes. Yeah, no, <laughs> Perfect. I'm taped on there. Awesome. <laughs> All where, right. where can people find you on social media, Jeremy? Just my name for everything at Jeremy Asbrock. Uh, you know, I've got two Facebook pages. My personal page is topped out at 5,000. So if you send me a friend request, it's just, unfortunately, it's just going to sit there because. And man, I've even gone through and like cleaned up for people that deactivated their account or, you know, we don't really have any mutual friends and you're not really adding anything to my Facebook or whatever. I I go through and clean it up, but I popped out. So I have the fan page, which basically puts out the same stuff. So, I mean, if you interact with it, I sometimes interact back. I have a Twitter, but man, I'm not very active on Twitter. So I wouldn't, you can follow me if you want, but I'm, I'm not very active there. Instagram and Facebook are the best places to cool. check me out. Right on. And yeah, Rock, Rock City Machine Company, man, we're like going to do our best to take advantage of every opportunity that's out there and, uh, you know, create some opportunities and, you know, make it a thing. Cool. Put, put, Can't put wait a to couple. See it. Put a couple pieces of vinyl on the side for me and Bill because we'll be ordering it right when it comes out. So awesome! Know, well, you, you guys will definitely know when it does. We're going to try to make as big a deal about it as possible. Oh yeah, so, and, we'll, and we'll we'll actually we'll promote it for you. So awesome! Well, yeah, All you right. guys still will have to have Ryan on talking about it. So maybe when that uh album release gets announced, that'd be a good time for him. Yeah, then he'll be able to actually like tell you the date. Right. That sounds good. And all right, like man. I said, all you guys are always welcome on here, too. Yeah, we it's funny, too. Like, to you, you know, when, when when Bill sent us the message to see if we could do today, you know, Ryan's kind of tied up tonight. I'm like, oh, man, well, we can just have him do a different date. He's like, no, I'd rather just have my own anyway. 
<laughs> that sounds like Ryan. <laughs> oh, and, and the truth is, is he's right. You know, like if we were both on together, uh, he'd, he'd wind up doing most of the talking. So, yeah, you know what? That's and we, right. we get you on here. We'll, 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 we'll do a lawnmower story and a few other things that are personal. Yeah, you know? he didn't bring lawnmowers. <laughs> he, he didn't have a lawnmower story. Yeah, nobody has Brian that. Brian ain't got lawnmower. He, he ain't fucking with that shit. So, you're right. He does not. <laughs> Brian doesn't have a yard. So, <laughs> there you go. That's helpful. Yeah. There you, go. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Jeremy. Hang out real quick. All I'll right, take guys. us out of here. Y'all visit right, agentsandrock.com. Check out our social media and past episodes. And until next time, peace out. Thanks for listening to the Ages of Rock podcast. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and most importantly, tell all your friends. Remember, you're never too old to rock. Until the next episode, peace out, folks.